Booyah. Hello and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video blog. It's been a long week, okay? Hence the beard, hence the unkempt hair, hence the curry stained t shirt. Mmm, Jalfrazy. I've been making videos on various aspects of making longbows and bits and pieces on making arrows as well. I'm wondering what aspect of bow making you guys want to see next. So I put that request out on Facebook and unfortunately nobody came back with any ideas. So I'm appealing to you YouTubers out there. Let me know what you want to see. Do you what bit of bow making is it you want to know about? What do you want me to film? What do you want to know about more clearly? Put it in the comments below or email us or whatever you want to do. So in this video I'm going to give you some general advice on bow making. Now in the hot weather we've had recently, yeah, I know it's disappeared again, but it may well return. It's due to be 25 degrees this weekend. Don't tiller in a hot room. Okay, if you're like a lot of amateur bowyers, you're probably working in your shed because that's where your wife keeps you. It's going to get hot in there if the sun's directly on it. And if you're tillering, particularly the early stages of tillering, it's going to be hot. The bow's going to get hot. You're going to lose a lot of poundage. The bow will take a set. So be aware. Perhaps work. If you're going to do tillering, do the tillering in the morning or late evening or something like that. One of the questions we get asked a lot is, how did we get into bow making? Well, I learned from my father. I was his apprentice for many years, and we now work together and run the family business. Richard originally got into bow making through his interest in Robin Hood. Like a lot of people of his age group, Robin Hood was a very popular character on television and in books. One of the questions we get asked about a lot is, what wood do we use? Well, there's probably five or six woods that we use regularly. Uh, lemon wood, hickory, um, purple heart, green heart, yew, osage. There's quite a few. A lot of them can be quite difficult to get hold of, particularly as far as quality for making bows is concerned. Yew is probably the most difficult to get hold of. It's certainly the most expensive. Um, there's a lot of myths around you. Uh, one of those myths is churchyard you. Um, I don't know whether any of you have actually seen a yew tree in a churchyard um, and ever tried to think, Ooh, could I get a bow out of that? Probably one or two of you have thought that and then when you've had a look you might have thought otherwise. They tend to grow very bush-like, um, not very straight. Uh, they're not competing for light that they're usually planted on their own. They're not usually high up in nice mountains, so they get nice tight growth rings. Tell you what, take a look at this video of a 500 year old yew tree in a churchyard. Let's play a game of Spot the Bow. Did you spot it? No, nope, neither did I. I was in a cafe the other day and a girl asked me, what do you do for a living? Now, when people ask me that, I tend to worry because I know I'm going to be bombarded with the same million questions that I'm always bombarded with. But her response took me by surprise. She said, that's cool. Now, I've always wanted to be cool, so it was quite nice to have a pretty young girl in a cafe say that I was cool because I make bows and arrows. So if you're there thinking making bows and arrows is glamorous and will make you cool, you will probably have to wait 15 years before somebody actually says it. 
If you're an amateur bowyer, and you probably are if you're subscribing to these videos, then good luck to you. I hope you're doing it because you enjoy it. And if you are thinking of doing it to make a living, then beware. It's difficult. Starting any business is tough. Archery is a minority sport. I'm sure you can probably tell that from the amount of coverage it got at the Olympics. And longbow is a minority within that minority. But you'll find we are a jolly bunch, and that probably makes the difference. But if you are going to do it, and you are going to make a go of it, do it with a business plan. Don't just do it because you see me or other bowyers do it and you think, yeah, that's cool. They're, they're enjoying their passion. Yeah, it is about passion. But it's also about working hard. It isn't easy. Because once you start down the route of doing something full time, for your living, that's what it becomes. And that quintessential interest and passion that you get out of doing it now, as an amateur, you may find that disappears when you're constantly bombarded by questions from people on the telephone or emails or where's my bow, my package hasn't arrived. Be sure that you're going to give it a go as a bow maker or as an arrow maker for the right reasons. Don't do it if you think that you're going to lose that hobby, if you're going to lose that thing which you now lose yourself in, that thing that you use at the end of the day to get away from your worries of work or life or whatever shit the world's throwing at you. But I am not trying to put you off. Enjoy the challenge of it. I'm lucky I still managed to get that satisfaction from having made something with my hands that I can pass on to somebody and they enjoy it and they love it. As I was saying, if you are one of those amateurs and you want to learn something, let us know what it is that you want us to video. Let us know what aspect of bow making or arrow making that you think would be appropriate for you. Thanks. Oh, and I almost forgot a big congratulations to Mum and Dad for getting first, both came first, in the field shoot at the Dunster Archery Week. Well done. Uh, oh, and also uh, subscribe. Everybody hit the subscribe button and uh, let us know what videos you want to see. Cheers.